I think it might be about time to give Eden a haircut. She's looking a bit scruffy. What do you think? It's time for some grooming. You seem to have grown as well. There you are, Eden. It was all a trick. You're still small, aren't you? So who's this? Who this? Eden the dog. Chloe the dog. Don't you look like a big scruffy Eden? We are back in Chiang Mai for a little while. We are dog sitting and house sitting for our friends while they go away. Eden's got a nice little friend to play with and they seem to be getting on nicely, so all is well. Jay is already working on the next monthly special. We are heading out today to one of Chiang Mai's most unique temples, Wat Mong. We will see you there. To the temple. Okay, we're at Wat Mong. It's also known as the Forest Temple because it's in a forest. There's lots of interesting like underground tunnels and chapels and it's in a nice obviously foresty natural setting so let's go and have a look around. There's over 300 temples in Chiang Mai and when we very first moved here we had this idea that we were going to go and see them all and obviously that didn't happen there's far too many. <laughs> That's one of the differences between living in Chiang Mai there's um, less Buddhist temples and there's actually quite a lot of churches, Christian churches, much more than there are in Chiang Mai. Here's a King Menrai statue here as well, like what we have in Chiang Mai. Jay's gone ahead of me because he's filming the time lapse. According to what I just read on that sign, this temple was built so that monks who studied in the city could have a solitude and a place to come and meditate in peace and quiet in the forest. So that's how this temple came about. This is where you enter the underground tunnels. <laughs> so it's quite a cool little um, temple to come and explore. There's all these tunnels and with little alcoves and Buddha shrines. This section of the tunnel actually feels quite low. It's not often that I feel tall. <laughs> this is one, one situation. See how close my head is to the ceiling. Much smaller than five foot two, you have to be prepared to duck in places. So at the end of the tunnel, you come out on the other side to the forest. At the end of the underground tunnels and up these steps, we have the stupa. I'm not entirely sure what the tunnels were built for or what they're meant for, so I'm going to have to find out. So you leave your shoes at the other side of the temple, so when you do come out at the other end in the forest, you do have to walk around barefoot or socked feet in the leaves and stuff, so just be prepared for that. <laughs> Don't put your good socks on. Look who I found! It's Jamal! Yeah, back together! <laughs> There's a lot of noise going on, lots of like banging drums and there's lots and lots of people here today. So I'm not sure if it's a special day, no. I'm not, so I don't really know what's going on here. I'm gonna, we're going to have to find out. It's not, it's not ideal for me because there's loads of people in the tunnels and I'm trying to do a hyperlapse in the tunnels and I'm blocking everyone's way. I just read in a couple of signs to find out why the tunnels are here, but it doesn't say anything. It just says they built a tunnel, so I guess there's no reason. They just fancied a tunnel. <laughs> Go and find my partner for life. Haven't seen him for a while. <laughs> quiet temple where the monks can relax in the forest. <laughs> so all the commotion is because they're ordaining new monks. They've all got their freshly shaven heads and they're wearing the white robes. All their families are dancing so it's quite quite nice to see. So that's what's happening today. <laughs> now we know. After our initial thought that we were going to visit all the temples in Chiang Mai, we had a few that we liked particularly. We did see quite a good amount. Yeah, trying to get through all 300 plus is a bit of an ambitious task. But if you're feeling up for it, it's something to take up quite a bit of time if you come to Chiang Mai. <laughs> also, it's nice when they're different from each other. And you do find a lot of the temples, they're all very samey. So once you've seen one in a certain style, then you've kind of seen them all. So that's how I feel about it anyway. Ooh, it's heating up now. I've got a scarf on. 
it's like, oh, I need to get this off now. So I think we're almost done at the temple and we can head on somewhere else. I think we're going to go and get some lunch now. So, woohoo! Jay's just finishing off the time lapse out there and then we're good to go. All done? Yeah. If you think a steady cam workout is hard, <laughs> try holding the camera up like that for 250 shots over 10 minutes in the sun. Well, you want muscles, don't you? <laughs> hey, Wafi Mong finished. It's not even midday yet, but um, it's super hot already, so we're going to go and get a nice cold drink somewhere now. The difference between driving in Chiang Rai and driving in Chiang Mai is it's a lot busier. There's a lot more people on the streets, and the moat road that surrounds the city, you have to be very aware that someone's not like cutting in on your left and on your right all the time. Um, I think that the driving around in the city is more difficult in Chiang Mai, definitely. You've got to be more aware of motorbikes and traffic. Another big difference between Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai is that Chiang Mai has a huge, huge expat com committee? Community. <laughs> community. Um, much bigger than Chiang Rai, that we know of anyway. Chiang Mai is the place to go if you definitely want to be integrated fully in an expat community. Yeah, if you want a big social scene and you're really into expat community, then Chiang Mai is definitely better than Chiang Rai. Yeah. Food! So we've just come to one of our cafes that we used to come to quite a bit when we lived here. Dindi Cafe. The mud, the mud hats or the mud It's nice, they do good food, vegetarian and really nice smoothies. I like the sound of that. Sasha went for an iced masala chai. Chickpea curry with vegetable soup and brown rice. It doesn't really seem to matter where you are in Chiang Mai. You can always hear planes flying overhead. That's something that we've forgotten about living here. in Chiang Mai. We don't hear the planes at all. So that was a nice vegetarian place to eat. Yeah, I like it there. I'm nice and full now. I think uh, that's another difference between Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai. There's a much bigger vegetarian and vegan food scene here. Yeah. If, you're, if you're a vegan, you can find a lot more restaurants and stuff here than you can in Chiang Rai, definitely. Okay, back to the car. <laughs> um, you didn't really think that was our car, did you? That's a better condition than our car. <laughs> Poor car. We shouldn't be insulting it. it takes us everywhere. Yeah. Oh, monster number two. Yeah, you got your little puppy. Nice. Good girl. Good girl. It's a new morning in Chiang Mai. We are about to go out and film a time lapse of the moat road on our car like this for my episode of the month. Then we'll go get some coffee in one of our favourite specialist coffee shops. So I'll see you there. So we are at Asama Cafe. She is a really good barista. She makes great coffees, which is what we're excited about because yeah. Mei Hong Song had poo coffee. So come with us. <laughs> this is Asama. She makes speciality coffees that we haven't really seen anywhere else. So that's why we like it. That was most definitely the best coffee I've had for weeks. Absolutely amazing. Sasha's gravity was something we've never tried before. Amazing. Thanks, Asama. There was one thing we can definitely say that we miss about Chiang Mai is the high-end grocery store Rimping. It's only in Chiang Mai and it is brilliant. Another little difference we've noticed is that the groceries seem to be a tiny bit cheaper in Chiang Mai, like by a few baht. Not that much. Everything seems to be a bit cheaper. I think it's because of the distance that the stuff has to travel, maybe. Now we're going to go and watch Chappie at the cinema. Another massive difference between Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai is the cinemas. The amount of cinemas we have here is quadruple and they're so much better as well. You've got IMAX, 4D cinemas, and there's four of them too. So we're going to take advantage of that while we're here. Finished 
watching Chappie, which I thought was brilliant. I loved it. I actually cried. Yeah, I had a few tears welling. That's probably one of the most satisfying films I've watched in a long time. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. So as you can see behind us, massive shopping centre. This is one of the newer ones. And there's three more like this too. So Chiang Mai definitely has a better se selection of shopping centres than Chiang Mai, definitely. And English films are a bonus. So it's actually going to leave me alone now and go and do some shopping because I need to do another hyperlapse for my episode. I'm actually going to try and create a video entirely out of photos. So that should be quite interesting to watch. So are you going to go? Yes. All right. Okay. Don't spend too much. <laughs> You know it's food time, don't you? Good girl. Gobble, gobble, gobble. That's it. Good girl. There you go. It's been great using our friend's office for a while and their super fast internet speed as well. We can get fast speeds in Chiang Rai too, but because we live out on a farm, the cables can't support fast upload speed, so we're restricted to quite a low speed. So having a city environment and being close to the city has allowed us to use such a fast speed here and it's something that we kind of feel like we need now, now that we've used it. Saying that though, living on the farm has so many more benefits that we may as well just upload our videos overnight and just let it take its time so we can live the relaxing farm life still. Because city life is great but it's not for us for a long time. So as a note, if you want to live outside of the city, you're restricted to slower internet speeds. But Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai both have fast internet connection availability. So you're not lost for that further up north. It has been quite nice being back in Chiang Mai. I have to admit, this house, our friend's house, is in a brilliant location. It's literally, if we were to choose a house here in Chiang Mai, this is the location we would choose for city life. But that's it, it is city life, very urban. But now that we've been living in Chiang Rai for a while, in the farm and surrounded by nature, even Chiang Mai feels too busy for us now. We are liking it, but I don't think we could live in the city again permanently after experiencing farm life, to be honest. But one thing we have noticed is like, where we live in Chiang Rai, you look out every window, there's like mountain or scenery or banana fields or nature and a farm walk. And being in a city, obviously you've got no choice. You have to be surrounded by other houses and stuff, which can feel a bit claustrophobic, but we are enjoying being close to everything and walking about without having to drive everywhere, which is pretty cool. A lot of the houses in the city have like bars and grates on the window, which I don't know, just maybe it's just an additional security thing, but it does lead you to believe that perhaps there's a higher possibility of somebody breaking in. But I don't know, I've never felt unsafe living in Chiang Mai either. So that's a definite plus one for Chiang Rai. If you like nature and you like being surrounded by peaceful places and stuff, then Chiang Rai definitely tops it. One thing I noticed in particular about living back in Chiang Mai in the city rather than on the farm is going to bed at night and waking up in the morning. There's no cockles, there's no night insect noises or anything. It's just, it's quiet here. Um, there's not too much traffic noise, but it's just, there's no nice nature noises. And that's something I really miss and I really like where we are living on the farm in Chiang Mai. And you don't get that here. <laughs> I miss my cockles. <laughs> After all the driving about, going to hotels and eating at restaurants for three times a day, it's good to get back into being able to cook for ourselves and stuff, so that's why it's nice to house sit. So that's just cooking dinner, and then get ready for our day tomorrow where we're going to be walking around the city, trying to get as much of the Chiang Mai experience as possible while we're here. It's going to be fun. So there we have it. That is our Chiang Mai versus Chiang Rai comparison video. A couple of people have actually asked us that very question, what is the difference between living in Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai? So we thought it's the perfect time to do one while we're back in Chiang Mai. Uh, we hope you liked it. After asking the question in the last video about where you saw us from, we found out that quite a lot of you have come from Retire Cheap Asia. So I just want to say thanks to JC for sharing our stuff. And if any of you guys are still in the forum, I think that people will find our stuff interesting to see 
then feel free to share it in there too because more people can benefit from seeing what living in Thailand is like from our perspective. So thanks JC and thanks all you guys for sharing our stuff. It makes a big difference. And don't forget to thumbs up and leave us a comment and we will see you next time. Bye.